Hello and welcome to episode 139 of my podcast all about knitting and crochet and my yarn shop here in Wiesbaden, Germany. I'm Kiko and today is April 18th, 2022. And today I am wearing my Wolkich, which is a free pattern by Martina Beam on Knitty.com. I used 50 grams of pure Angora yarn um, that was produced uh, by a German family and they call their company Seidenhase, um, dot de. Seidenhase means silk rabbit, uh, I think. <laughs> and um, so they have their own animals, they treat their animals well, so it's a good thing to buy yarn from them. And um, this is the Volkich that I knit. And as you can see, it doesn't look a lot different from what it looked like last week. Um, which doesn't mean I didn't do the experiment I was talking about. I did throw it in the dryer, in the drying drying machine, dryer. Um, I was a bit worried if that would work out fine and if the yarn would be hand or something. Um, when I did do it, I realized that my dryer has a wool setting. I had never noticed that before because I never put wool things into the dryer. Usually I hardly ever use the machine anyway. But it does have that and it takes two minutes um to to do the program so i put it in for two minutes it came out fine it hadn't really changed a lot it was supposed to fluff up more so to be more like hairy and things and i thought well that went well but the change wasn't as much as i'd hoped so i put it in again and then the next time i took it out i just looked over it and i realized there was a hole so one of one thread of yarn must have snapped and um, at one of the points where there are the, um, these aren't yarn overs. This is just next to the increases and the decreases. The stitches sort of grow like this. And, uh, and at one point I noticed there was a big hole and um, so I knew something went wrong. So I was a bit worried. I didn't put it back in, of course. Um, I, I think it's fluffy enough the way it is. So this it's going to stay this way. I'm not quite sure whether that really happened in the dryer. It could have happened while I washed it and when I took it out um, and I might just not have noticed it before. So it could have happened when I put it into the bag or took it out of the bag or something like that. But uh, I was just a bit worried. I just found the spot. I fixed it not very nicely because with the pattern it's really difficult to um, do it invisibly. But even though it's quite visible like this, once I wear the thing, you won't be able to, to see that spot. And by the way, this is what I have left of my 50 grams. So somebody suggested I knit a piece um, to put that in the dryer to see what happens. But this is too, too small, it's too little yarn to do anything except fix a hole. So I'm going to hold on to this really carefully just in case something else happens. So I have the original yarn to fix it. Yeah, but now the hole has been fixed. It's washed. It's been washed. Um, it's dry. <laughs> and even if it didn't fluff up a lot, I'm still really, really happy with the way it looks, the way it feels, the way it wears. Um, so I had it around my neck when I started recording. I should have pointed it out. <laughs> so I can, I can pull it apart like this. So uh, I get a bit of air to my neck if I want to, if I want to wear it a bit further away, but I can sort of pull it around a little so um, that it stays closer to my neck. I can fold it over so I have, have it tighter like this and that's fantastic. I can even wear it, pull it over my head. I don't want to do that right now because of my hair, <laughs> but the other way I can wear it is just put the whole thing around my neck. I'll do that in a minute. I'll just quickly show the uh, jacket or cardigan I'm wearing. It's the, uh, the pattern is called Carnaby Crochet Along. It was a pattern that was published in the Simply Crochet magazine as a crochet along. And the thing they did is they published a piece of the pattern in every magazine for 10 months. So it took 10, <laughs> We had to wait for 10 months to get the whole pattern. And um, I first started to crochet um, the jumper out of some sock yarn in very bright colors 
But because I couldn't go on, because I had to wait for the next magazine to come out, I um, started to crochet another one, and that's this one in different shades of blue and a bit of purple out of cotton. So this is more for the warm weather seasons and the um, sock yarn. I use the DK weight or I think it's DK weight or the six ply sock yarn. That's a lot warmer because there's wool in it. So I wear that for the colder weather. Yeah, and I think the colors go together perfectly with the blues and a bit of purple that's in here. And so this is the other way I really like to wear this. Um, just put it around my neck like this and I can very easily take it off and put it on if I feel like it. And um, yeah, so that's what I'm wearing today. Then on to finished objects. I have two finished objects this week. Um, and the first one are the 24 day socks by um, Emma Potter. She designed these socks primarily to use with um, advent calendar yarn. So if you have 24 different colors and you don't know what to do with it, this is a perfect pattern um, to be using these different colors. So you can do every stripe with a different color and you'll get a wonderful effect. I didn't have a advent calendar with minis at the moment. So I decided to use several leftover colors of opal yarn and uh, I did promise to show them to you today but one of them is gone and I think the next finish object might be the reason it's gone I may have just displaced uh, put it somewhere where I can't find it but I so basically I, I chose five different colorways by opal and black sock yarn by Hansa farm um, with alpaca in it and then I, um, so that was the first sock. I did one stripe um, switching through all these different um, colors of yarn. So this is mainly green. This is a lot of red, then blue. And then this one has many different colors in it. And then the last one that I can't find anymore had many different colors. And I can show you those colors because for the foot of the first sock, I decided to only use the colorful Ball of yarn because the difference between using different balls and just the one is not that big and it was just not worth the effort of always cutting the yarn and using a different ball and so I decided um, to use just the one for the foot of the first sock and then for the second sock I decided to use this color which has like blue and red and yellow and um, Yep, many different colors, but no green. So I decided I'll use those two balls for the second sock. And I just, because the red in here and the red in there is quite similar. And the same with the blue in here and blue in there. And the fifth ball I had already used for the foot of the first sock. So that's what I did for the second sock. So every fifth stripe is green. Oh no, that's the first sock. <laughs> this is the second sock. So you can see the green stripes rather clearly and um, in between the colors um, ran a lot longer than I thought. So on the whole, this is not as colorful as I thought, even though there are reds and pinks and blues and whatever. The yellow never made it into the sock. So this is the yarn I used, but there's only very little yellow and I didn't need that much yarn because there was always black in between. But um, yeah, that's okay. So the socks are quite different now, but um, I think that's okay. You can still tell they belong together with, because of the pattern and the black yarn. And now I can't wait to start wearing them because I want to see, this is the first pair that I've knit for myself out of the new alpaca sock yarn by Hansa Farm. I knit a gray pair for my sister so I think she's already wearing them. Um, and now this is the first pair that I've knit for myself. So um, as soon as I start wearing them, I can see how they how they hold up, how they wash. And um, yeah, I can tell you more about that yarn. What I can tell you right now is it's incredibly soft and it's fantastic to work with. So let's hope it wears the same way. 
So that's the first Finnish object. And then the next Finnish object is also a new <laughs> project that I started and finished last week. And the I, I got the idea from someone in my sub madness group. She crocheted that as an in-between project between the um, rounds of the sock madness. And that's um, yeah, what I did too then. Um, and what she did is she crocheted a huge granny square. I think she even made two to use on top of each other. But so far I've only done one. So this is a huge big granny square. Um, this is supposed to be the front. And I used 10 different strands of sock yarn. So I went to my bag with all the leftover sock yarn that I have. And I think I I must I think I posted a picture of all the or some of the leftover yarn that I used. Um sorry, got distracted. Um yes, yeah, so I think I I um posted a picture of some of the leftovers that I started with, but I use a lot of the little balls that you have sometimes left over if you've done like several projects with the same yarn and then you only end up with something between two and 10 grams. I tried to use up all of those. And the great thing is I used 12 millimeter hook and um, this just eats yarn like it was nothing. So at some points I felt like I had to put in a new ball of yarn like every five stitches or sometimes even after three stitches, one of those mini leftover yarns would just be gone. And um, but I also have bigger leftovers like um, those two. So I used several bigger leftover balls of yarn and then all those tiny ones and all the tiny ones are gone now. I think I have two or three small leftover balls now that were left when uh, I finished the last round. But yeah, I think it's fantastic. So as soon as I've um, accumulated a few more of those little leftover balls, I will crochet another one. And this is just like a little cushion or something that I can use if I sit outside um, either on the balcony here or at home and uh, or any chair really that's a bit too hard or a bit too cold um, could be either. I can just put it down and even on the chairs here in my shop I can I could use it and um, yeah it has like a thousand colors it's really easy to do it's just a basic granny square and then in the end I crochet one round of single crochet around the edge and that's it yep so really happy with that and I'm pretty sure I'll be making more of those in the future so these are all the finished objects for today um, then on to works in progress and as usual I'll start with my socks and the oldest sock on my needle now are the cat socks for my nephew the first one I finished knitting haven't uh, I still haven't done the um, embroidery um, so there's still no cat to be seen but I finished the leg of the second sock I knit the heel and now I can knit down the foot there'll be I have to check with the first one I think I did 40 rounds in this blue color and then the rest of the sock I knit in black so that's going to be where the cat face uh, will be later on yeah so nothing fancy just a fish lips kiss heel and um, some more simple knitting to be done and then the next pair are the another fairly simple pair of socks um, my DK weight or six ply socks out of another rainforest color by Opal and I finished the second toe and this is the color that I chose for the second toe I um, I know the yellow is a bit brighter than the yellow that's in the yarn but still I thought it looks funny I like the combination and they still haven't got any heels but they will get afterthought heels in black at some point um, I just need to find a moment where I can concentrate um, to cut into the yarn and then pick up the stitches and then I can knit the heels. So these are the fairly simple socks and then I continued knitting on the um, 
on the pattern that we got in the sock madness I just dropped two stitches um, and I think I was told that the pronunciation is a bit different from how I used to say it and I think it's plaid pocket socks not played is it plaid not quite sure if that's right so you can let me know if you want to um, but it's this this um, this interesting three color pattern um, and it's the so that's the plaid pattern hope that's the right pronunciation and this is the pocket that's in the name of the design so I finished the um, the pocket this is knit in a, in double knitting technique so I knit the pocket and the, the sock itself at the same time um, and then once the pocket is long enough you just knit the stitches together so this is closed this um, whatever I put in the pocket won't fall out I decided to only knit five more rounds for the competition we had to do ten but I'm fairly short so I thought that sock is long enough this way then I knit the heel flap as the pattern tells us to do so it's this rather squishy um, thick uh, heel flap then I turned the heel and I just went back to knitting I lost another stitch <laughs> I went back to knitting in the round with the pattern um, the problem is that I haven't done the gusset decreases yet or I've only started doing them so the gusset decreases will be down on the sole of the foot down here and because um, because they aren't done yet I have more stitches on my needle than usual and as this is one of those tiny chow gu circular needles um, yeah they just tend to drop off if I'm not careful yeah I'm still very much in love with the colors I'm really happy that the heel flap turned out to be so colorful it could have been just completely blue or turquoise but it just happened to have the orange and the green in it uh, same with the pocket I'm really happy that all those colorful stripes are in the pocket uh, really like that really looking forward to seeing the second sock could be completely different there because I will not try to get two socks the same so the colors may end up in different places but that's what I like about Opal Pan Opal yeah so that's that and then I last week when I was recording I was pretty sure I would have another sock madness sock on my needle today but the moderators decided that they would not um, start the next round before Easter so um, the earliest the next round is going to start is sometime today but so we don't get bored over Easter they gave us another bonus pattern and I think I believe everybody got this bonus pattern no matter whether you finished the second round or whether you were a cheer cheerleader or not and it wasn't a proper sock pattern but basically it was a pattern for a heel flap and um, that looked so interesting that I just had to try it so I um, picked this Opal yarn which is part of their Black Dragon series and I got a really old leftover yarn which by the way is also in the huge granny squares I think this color runs through the whole uh, of the granny square because it was, I had a lot of it left when I started it now this uh, it's become a lot lighter but it's still enough for two heel flaps and this is what the heel flap looks like and the thing is it's not knit it's crocheted and it's not just simple crochet but it's um, Tunisian crochet uh, I've done Tunisian crochet before not a lot but enough to know how it works and in the pattern she um, I think she knit a completely gray sock and then a very colorful heel flap and I like that idea so I decided to knit the sock in with the gray yarn but put in this really colorful heel flap it's very tight and very sturdy so this will probably keep forever even if the rest of the socks sock falls apart this heel flap will never get destroyed <laughs> I'm pretty sure um, this is what the inside looks like just in case you're interested um, I used a three millimeter needle 
for the heel flap and I think it might have been too small a needle because for Tunisian crochet you're supposed to use a needle that's a bit bigger than the yarn calls for. I knit the sock on a 2.75 millimeter needle and maybe I'll use the 3.3 millimeter hook that I have because it's a Japanese hook um, for the second heel flap. Even if it turns out slightly bigger I wouldn't mind. I just want to see uh, what it looks like, what it feels like. Um, but first I have to finish this sock. It's just a shorty sock because the main aspect was the heel flap. Um, at first I wanted to knit a very simple sock but because this yarn, even though it's beautiful and I like the way this black bit is um, worked into the yarn, it makes counting the rows really difficult. So I decided to put in a little bit of a pattern and I'm just knitting two rounds all knit and then two rounds knit two purl two and this just gives me a bit of a pattern so I can count the rows easily. So this is the, what's it called, crochet heel flap sock. <coughs> um, I think the pattern's not available, available for everybody yet, but I, from what I've read, I'm pretty sure she's going to make it available for everybody after the sock madness. So if you're interested in that, watch out for that once the sock madness is done. Yeah, and that's it for socks um, today. As I said, the next round of sock madness will start anytime soon, <laughs> anytime today, uh, or maybe they'll take a longer break and it, it'll start tomorrow or in two or three days. We'll see about that. I'll let you know next week. Then my next uh, sock yarn project is the little cowl. Uh, I am knitting to go with the pullover I wore last week, my Raglano, um, and this is out of Bernd Kessler's book, Knit Stitches, Pearl Stitches, and um, yeah, so it's just this simple pattern that gives these points um, at the bottom of the cowl or loop, and now I, it's um, supposed to just be uh, a rip pattern, but I am going to mix two of his patterns in the book. So I want to, after I finish knitting the rip pattern, I want to do another set of these um, tips, but I will offset them. So when I fold it over, the, the tips will be in between those. It's a bit difficult to explain. You'll see once I get done. But as you can see, I finished knitting this, this pattern bit and it's down to just knit two purl two. And I will have to do quite a bit more of that so that this bit can sit like on my chest or my shoulder. And then I have the ribbing going up and going down again. And then I can have the next set of those points or tips or whatever. That is that. Then I did a little, I knit a little bit on my cardigan. Um, it will probably look absolutely the same. It did last week, but I did start the decreases. Um, so I've done four decreases. That means I need to knit another six. I did 10 decreases on this sleeve and then I will put the um, stitches on hold um, so I can add a colorful cuff later on. But um, yeah, let's hope I can do the six decreases this week so I can get on with the cardigan. And then I did a little crochet. It feels like I did most of the things I did just a little bit <laughs> last week, but it was one of those weeks. So I continued crocheting on my um, little squares that I'm going to use for the um, for my stovetop in the kitchen that I want to put the um, yeah, like a doily or something on. Um, and I'm I still need seven squares, so that's what I'm crocheting at the same time. It sort of goes with my jacket. It's the same yarn and some of the colors are the same, so that's no big surprise. Last week, all the pieces had two colors. Now I added the third color on these three. And with these four, I even put the third color. So um, I started off with these because it was easier to see with the light um, yarn, it was easier to work. 
and then I did the first one of these and I just decided there wasn't enough light to continue so that's why I hadn't done the fourth color on these one two three so they have three colors they have four colors that's it so these three will have to look like this and then once I've done that I can start doing the fifth color uh, on all of them and then the color sequence will go the other way again yeah so that's that and then the dinosaur I do try to crochet 10 rounds every week but last week that was impossible I think I managed four um, didn't even have the round so I'm still working with my two uh, the first two balls of yarn but they are getting very thin um, not quite sure you'll be able to tell the difference with the two more uh, four more so four rows of crochet means it's two rows in each color so there's only two more rows that you can see even though I've worked four um, yeah so I'm getting closer to the toes I think on this foot I hope that this stripe will be finished soon so I the next stripe will appear um, yeah, we've moved over a bit to this in this direction yeah so this is the happy tyrannosaurus rex i am crocheting <laughs> pattern is called stomp still enjoy the crocheting a lot i just need a bit more time somewhere yeah and then i um added two more squares to my blanket i haven't shown my all memories blanket in a while because i never uh, found the time to continue knitting on it but I'm piling up the leftover yarn from all the projects that I'm finishing and um, so I decided to finally sit down and do a bit more work on it so the idea with this blanket is not to finish off the leftover yarn but to have one square for every project I knit with the yarn so if I do two projects with the same yarn, I can have two squares, but otherwise it's just one square per project. And this, for example, was the Quadra Cowl by Martina Bim that I knit recently. This is a square that I knit. This is a pair of socks with two colors and so on. And these are the two squares that I knit last week. And if you've been following my podcast for some time, you might remember that I knit a pair of socks that I call Sock Couple every year. These are socks for an elderly couple that I sent socks to every Christmas. So last year she got socks in this color. The main sock was knit with this colorful yarn. And then I used this solid color for the heel and toes and maybe the, uh, the ribbing. Did I do the ribbing with that color? I don't remember. Maybe it was just the heel and toe. And maybe it was the, the cuff, the ribbing as well. I don't know. But the next two squares that I'm going to do will be from his socks. So I will do his colorful yarn next. And then the dark gray that I use for his socks next. And then, um, yeah, they will be part of the blanket. And this, by the way... These two colors are the so were the socks that I sent them the year before, her socks and his socks. Yeah, so I'm really happy that I um, got around to adding a few squares onto this blanket. Hope to do the next two at least this week, maybe even more, we'll see. And that brings me to our knit along. We are knitting the Star Cushion um, by Gudrun Ole. It's a free pattern on Ravelry. I did a video a tutorial video to show you how to knit this um, star cushion it's not difficult but just in case you weren't quite sure how it works you can check out the video um, this is the first middle piece that i knit and i continued knitting on the second one so it's not finished yet rounds are getting longer you increase stitches every other round and as soon as this piece is as big as this one I can put them together and then I can start knitting the star points and then um, yeah uh, that's always exciting I'm using the yarn by Rico uh, it's a fairly old yarn but I think the glitter and the grays are 
great color for a star and for a cushion and it's going to be for my sister yeah that's it that was everything i knit and crocheted last week i hope you enjoyed the video and i'll see you in the next one bye